What's going on, everyone? Dr. Drake here, and welcome to episode 17 of your weekly Wednesday Wine Review, where we spread knowledge one sip at a time. As always, if you enjoy the videos, please give it a like, hit that subscribe button and notification bell, so you never miss out on these awesome wine reviews. This week, we are celebrating a tad bit early, but Friday is International Sauvignon Blanc Day, as well as Cinco de Mayo, so you can enjoy a nice glass of Sauvignon Blanc right before you make yourself delicious margaritas. And don't worry, those will be reviewed in time. The producer of this wine has become one of my favorites in recent years, known as Ten Sisters, and is sourced from New Zealand in the most renowned region of Marlborough. Even though France is home to this grape, New Zealand has built a huge reputation for Sauvignon Blanc, as well as Australia, Chile, Argentina, and even in America. New Zealand is separated into two different regions, known as the North Island and the South Island. The North Island is where they grow a lot of red grapes, such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Pinot Noir, due to its warmer climate. But on the Southern Island is where Sauvignon Blanc thrives, particularly in the northern part of the Southern Island, known as Marlborough, where 90% of production is Sauvignon Blanc. 2023 marks Marlborough's 50th birthday this year. After emerging from one of the world's strictest lockdowns, the Appalachian is using the milestone to refocus its image on quality over quantity, which is how I believe wine and in general everything should be. In ways they are doing this is from a brand new released map, which is a first of its kind, and this is the detail Marlboro's sub-regional differences. This is from the map's creator's words. Defining the sub-regional hierarchy of the region is vital for understanding the diversity of the region, known as the Appalachian Marlboro Wine, or also better known as AMW. This was founded in 2018. AMW endeavors to safeguard regionally grown Sauvignon Blanc, or more recently, other varieties, in a manner like Europe's Appalachian program. Personally, from my understanding, is they are trying to be a lot stricter on how they produce their wines as a new world country, which tends to be a little bit more lenient than old world countries, which is not only beneficial to the winemakers, but also to the consumers, and to the wine aficionados like myself, that New Zealand is not playing around. You can find more information about this at knowledgeinabottle.com. Let's dive deeper into this bottle. The hue of the wine is a pale straw white. The initial tack on the nose is fresh mowed grass with underlying notes of white grapefruit and gooseberry flavors. The palate brings a punch of white grapefruit, citrus, and gooseberry with an underlying brush of lemongrass and mineral tone that New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is so well known for all wrapped around a big acid backbone, but well balanced throughout the entire wine. I think this is well made and I've enjoyed this producer in the past and I'm glad I revisited it. It has been a few years since I've had this producer, but it made me fall in love with how well this country does well with this grape. I paired this with Drunken Muscles and let me tell you, it was a wonderful pairing as my taste buds were just clicking on all cylinders, to the smell, to the taste, to the bite, and a smell and a sip again just made me keep wanting more. I even used a cheap $11 bottle that we also have in the store as a base for the mussels. I really enjoyed this wine and recommend you all seek this producer out if you haven't tried them yet. It will most certainly be worth your while. The wine is moderately priced at $17.99 and I have a good amount in the store currently, so please come find me. As always, remember if you enjoyed the video to please give it a like, share with all of your friends, Hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay tuned for next week's prescription from the doctor.